Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for joining me for another episode of Women Making an Impact. Once we come together, we know we are forced to be reckoned with. And today I have Tasha Gordon Trey, which is like super interesting because if you see the way her name spelled on, um, you know, me putting it in the script, you'll notice that it's not necessarily spelt the way it's pronounced. So I'm going to ask yes. you straight to help us understand, because I'm <laughs> thinking there is some story behind this name. It is not, mm -hmm. it is unusually spelt for the pronunciation. So help us understand this and just tell us a little bit more about you and what are you passionate about right now? Okay, well, let me start by explaining <laughs> my name. <laughs> yeah. um, it is interesting because when my mother told me how she came up with the name, she said she was watching a movie. Um, I still have no idea what movie that was, but there was a character in the movie by that name, Tasha, oh. and it was spelled that way. And as I got older, I started, you know, let me find out exactly because everybody has had problems trying to, to uh, pronounce my name over the years. Because that is not the pronunciation that I can No, <laughs> no. And so it really struck me by the time I got to maybe in my early 20s, I started to get more curious about the origin of my name and come to find out it's actually Russian. The spelling is Russian. Oh, wow. And in Russia, they do pronounce it Tatya. And so I was so thrilled because I was like, wow, so maybe people really don't have the, the wrong uh, pronunciation of my name. But yeah, I grew up as Tasha. It's Russian, it's pronounced Tatia. And now to a certain extent, I, I actually answer to both. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, that must have been an interesting, because uh, one of the things that we discover, like your name is your identity, right? And yes. if, once you've grown up being called um, some, like whatever your name is as your family, because mm -hmm. some persons have family name and they have their mm -hmm. official name. And so yes. it's kind of interested when you do those background checks and you realize like checking the origin of your name and you realize, wait a minute, it is Russian. They right. pronounce it the way English, everyone in English is pronouncing, but my mom decided that she's going to say it's Tasha, right? So right. It's, <laughs> it's, always, <laughs> it, it's always one of those things I always... <laughs> One of the things I enjoy is like culture, um, like mm. not just culture in terms of food, but culture in terms of how people view things and how they go about just um, thinking of the same thing, but in a different way or pronouncing it in a different mm -hmm. way, even though it may mean the same thing. So that was quite interesting to know that. Yes. Now, I know yes. that you are on your publisher, but I think I want to talk more about mm. the work that you're doing with our youths, because I think that's like mm -hmm. so critical and so important for developing those young minds at this early stage in their life to be able to position themselves for better positions, you know, getting into rooms that they may not have thought possible and getting that early start does help build that confidence. Look, can you tell me a little bit about that? I can. And so I'll start a little bit by saying, um, because of my background, there's a reason why I am involved with um, the youth program that we were talking about. I am an attorney, a publisher, an editor, a writer, and a publishing consultant. And because of my background um, as an attorney, I really felt that I wanted to give back somehow. Yeah. And especially back, like when I was in high school, we were just high schoolers. We, we took classes, we did what we wanted to do, we had fun, and there was really no way in particular to um, experience things outside of your, your small world. Mm -hmm. um, whereas now, a lot of the high schools are really getting, uh, pushing their students to do more. And I, and, and I really appreciate the fact that a lot of students are actually um, um, part and part of that and participating yeah. in these. So what I am or have been for, I wanna say for the past three years, is I participate as a judge in mock trial competitions. Oh, wow. And a lot of times these are high school students or college students. It depends on which program it is. But what's going on right now are high school students throughout the country. Okay. And they're all participating in this mock trial competition, which is something, like I said, when I was in high school, I would never have dreamt of doing <laughs> such a thing. Yeah, we were just going to school and... and right. And that was and I, 
Yes. And I was so shy in high school anyway. So I don't think I would ever have gone, um, done this, but these students, um, they actually take on the role of prosecutor and defense attorney. And then someone else is the defendant and then they have witnesses. And so we literally go through a whole trial and it's been even more interesting lately because we're doing it all on zoom which is like a totally different <laughs> experience. But um, typically we actually go um, either go to an actual courtroom oh, wow. where they get to experience um, mm -hmm. being in the actual position of, of us being then the jury and then the judge stand is being um, at the bench and so forth. So I, I, these children are phenomenal. They're 16, 17, 18 year olds. And they are just phenomenal, whether it's on Zoom or in person. I just take my hat off to them because they put their heart and soul into, mm -hmm. into being the character that they're playing. And a lot of times they pull you in so deep that it's like, wow, am I really, are you really a high school student or are you really an attorney? <laughs> yeah. It's just, yes. And even during my experience in law school, these students are just so ahead of the game and I've talked to them like after the competition every time that we we meet we do like once a week and once we've scored everything we get to talk to the students okay. and there are some of them that I say to them I know you're in high school and maybe you haven't really considered becoming an attorney but you should because okay. you have the demeanor you have the drive you can just see it in so many of them and how they come across and the confidence it's just it's overwhelming a lot of times. I mean, and I just, yeah. That's, that's amazing. I, I think mm -hmm. that would have probably helped me a lot because I know growing up, mm -hmm. that's something that I wanted to be a lawyer. And my, okay. at the time, my um, icon, so to speak, or mentor, so to speak, because we mm -hmm. all, you know, find something it was actually Matlock and Perry Mason. Those are like my two television. I love, shows. yes, I love Matlock. Yeah. <laughs> kind of watch for, you know. <laughs> And that's how I used to practice. But I, I think that's a really mm -hmm. good opportunity to have them do the mm -hmm. trial and have the experience. I mean, we're going yes. to, do it, obviously, and we have to do it virtually. But, you know, having them go in that courtroom and go through that and have that feeling, it does help them develop. Mm -hmm. But something that I noticed is that you said is that growing up, you may not, you don't think you would have had the confidence to be able to do that. And yes. it's not just, and this is why I wanted to touch on that, because sometimes I find that confidence, some of us may have born with it. Some of us were taught from an early age how to yes. be confident. And a lot of us, including myself, I had to learn the process and I'm still learning mm -hmm. how to be confident. And as a woman, we find that sometimes that lack of confidence and belief in, us, in, and belief in ourselves is what stops us from making certain decisions and doing certain things in our lives. What yes. advice would you give to those women or women like myself who are still developing that mm. muscle to be able to, you know, really, as you said, find your inner line? So how, mm -hmm. what advice would you give to us? Wow. I, it, sometimes when I think about myself, I'm like the worst person to ask about confidence <laughs> when I think about how I started, because yeah. it, seriously, I was like the shyest child ever. And, you know, like, like, for example, you know, when you, you're in the car with your mom and, the mo and a mom pulls up to a, a store and she gives you the money and she wants you to just run in and grab something and, and come back. I was stricken with fear. Oh, wow. I couldn't get out the car. And that drove her crazy. <laughs> How did you <laughs> get over that, though? It, it took me years to get over that. So I would say in high school, and, and, and I'm sure you can, you, can, uh, uh, you can understand this too, because in high school is when I started modeling, I got into fashion. Okay. And being on stage and commanding the stage is what helped build my confidence oh. to a certain extent. But I knew even in high school, I knew I wasn't quite there, even though I could exude the confidence. I could walk, when I walked into a room, it was like all eyes were on me. They would follow me across the room. I knew I could exude that confidence, but on the inside, I just wasn't there. 
And so once I got into college, it took me a while with every, with every class, with every, with every, with, with every course, yeah. I built more confidence. Um, I, I always started off sitting in the back of the room where, you know, where most people, you know, it's like, I, they don't want to be seen. I, in, in, in school, I sat directly behind my best mm-hmm. friend. In order mm-hmm. to see me, my best friend had to do like that to be able to see me. <laughs> I was the one that sat directly <laughs> behind her. She moved yes. left, I moved left. If she yes. moved right, I moved right. Yes. And so you don't want to be seen. You don't want people to know you even exist. And so I started off in college doing that. And then halfway through college, I got up enough confidence to sit in the front. I got up enough confidence to raise my hand and do different things. So once I got into law school, law school is what made me realize that I was so much more than what I ever thought I could be. Law school brought out not only confidence, but this extrovert, because I've been an, an introvert for all my life too. It brings out this extrovert that you don't know even exists. <laughs> and that really just changed the way that I looked at life and, and, and the possibilities. And even though, but I'll say I probably practiced out of my whole career, I've probably practiced law about two years. Mm-hmm. I realized that practicing law was not necessarily what I wanted to do. And I realized that even in law school. But what law school made me realize was that I could go anywhere and I could do anything. And that's really what led me down the path. I started off in media because um, I wanted to actually be on television. And I always think about this because being such a shy child, and then all of a sudden in law school, I want to be on television. It's like, wait a minute, is this the same person? But for so, someone that's going through the same, like having that difficult, mm-hmm. as I said, we're, we're talking to like the women who are experiencing because something mm-hmm. that we've realized, and it's been that way for a while, but I think more so with COVID, we're realizing that women are being affected a lot more than yes. males going through everything that's happening. A lot mm-hmm. of, you know, a lot of women, whether or not it's in abusive relationships to losing their jobs, to caring for the entire home and, you know, just doing so mm-hmm. much. Sometimes mm-hmm. we go through that period where we just want to release and breed or we just want someone to say, oh, you, you got this, you know, you can right. do this. Right, right. Is it a case where sometimes like, cause I find sometimes I do that. It, I mm-hmm. get into that space where I'll compare myself to someone else and say, you know, someone that I'm seeing is like, right. how can this person do it? How are they managing? How are they doing everything? Right. And it comes mm-hmm. down most of the time to that self-belief and not believing in myself that I can possibly do it as well, and that right. I can do this, even though this situation may be difficult. What would you say in going back to that confidence uh, tip Mm -hmm. and also like self-belief? How do we get women to really find it in a lion? It is something that if you, first of all, the way I see it is, if you believe that you can be more than you are, then you will find that path. Yeah. And I think that's that's the key, no matter how shy or how uh, how little confidence you have. If you know deep down that you can be more than what you are, that you can strive to be bigger and better, that's what's going to make you step away from that and 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 put yourself in a in a uh, you got to push yourself out of that comfort zone. But you have to know no matter how how you feel at that point in time, you know you're better than that. That is- and that's yeah, that's really where it comes from because that's that's something that I always had to look at myself for too. Because every day I think we deal with this. Yeah. I have my down days and my up days as well, and I actually still see myself looking at other people too, going, "Wow, how is she having all of this and I'm struggling?" But you can't, you cannot compare yourself to other people. I have to always tell myself that too. Like you have to know where you are and at the time. And know that you will be there when you get there on your own time. You can't exactly. compare yourself to other people. Exactly. But it's really, it's just this, this inner feeling that if you know deep down that you're, you're better than that, you've got to find a way to get beyond it. You've got to. 
Absolutely. I mean, that's, yeah. that's the thing. Sometimes one of the things that I do whenever I find myself in that comparison analysis phase, it's like, mm-hmm. what is causing this? You know, is it something I'm looking at on social media? Is it, you know, something that's happening in the home or something like that? So I kind of like pull right. myself back and you know, take myself out of that situation. But it's not always easy, but you know, no, no, it's find, not. We have to find ways to really make ourselves um, mm-hmm. believe everything that we want to achieve is possible and that we exactly can those rooms that you know where yes. opportunities and the decisions are being made. And yes. you know, there are a lot of women who are thinking that, you know, of the belief that, you know, how do I get into these rooms that the decisions mm-hmm. are being made? How do I mm-hmm really stand up and let my voice be heard in these in these places because we're no longer telling our girls that oh you know it's about the fairy tales and the glass slippers that right. fitting into a glass slipper it's about breaking those glass ceilings that exactly society would have set for us mm-hmm. so how do we or what advice would you give to women as to how can they get into these rooms like really stand up and speak up and ask for what they want in these rooms Mm-hmm. Um, and believe me, I've been in those rooms and I'm, <laughs> it's interesting to be like the only woman or in a, a lot of times, the only black woman yeah. in the room yeah. and to have enough confidence within yourself to be able to participate in whatever conversation that's happening. What I once I got into the room, and I'll back up a little bit, but once I got into that room, I had to always remind myself that I wouldn't be in that room if I weren't worthy of being in that room. Absolutely. And so that forced me to make sure that I was participating in whatever conversation was happening, because that's really how it works. If you're in that room, that means you belong in that room. Exactly. So in order to get to that room, You've got to do things like, and again, it goes back to pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. So for example, a lot of people are highly afraid of speaking in public. If that is something that you know is is going to help you in your career, then you've got to force yourself to do it. And it means um, there's Toastmasters International. If you can find one in your area, join that because those people will force you out of your comfort zone and they will they will help push you in the right direction and you get more comfortable and you get more confidence. You have to seek out those opportunities to build your confidence. And then once you do that, you start to see how better you are and how you're getting better and moving forward. And that then gives you the confidence to seek those opportunities that will that will move you up the ladder. Yeah. Um, and that's really, that's what it comes down to. I, I took so many different paths to get to where I am. And so that means a lot of other people will have to probably find their own path to get there, but it's got to start with the person. They have to push themselves out of their comfort zone. You can't just sit back and say, I'm so comfortable. Um, I'm afraid to put myself out there. I'm comfortable being right here. If you see yourself doing more, then you have to step outside of your yeah, comfort zone. It's, it's all about yeah. getting uncomfortable. Is it mm-hmm. go, getting mm-hmm. getting uncomfortable, making yourself get taking yourself out of that comfort zone? Because we we can't say we want things. That's something that I've discovered as well. I can't just say yes. this is what I want to do. This is what I want. This is what I want. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I have to take some form of action. And most of the time, the action steps that we have to take is, is going to require us to step out of that, out of our comfort zone. So I think that's like, that's like the most important thing is for one, understand what is it you want. And two, knowing that in order to get that, you will have to step out of your comfort zone. And sometimes stepping out of your comfort zone means that you have to try 10 different things before you can get to that place. Mm -hmm. And you can truly say, yes, I, you know, this is my passion. This is my purpose. This is my mission and vision. Because it takes some stumbling. It takes some losses. It takes, and the losses are never like, oh, I lost something. You have learned. The only time you lose is like, okay, you spent $20,000 to get that book when the book was only worth $5. That's 
to me, that's a loss. But if your experiences that you'd have gone through and whether or not they may not have worked out, but they're not losses, they're just mm-hmm. lessons that you would have learned in the whole process. And I think that's something that we as women, we have to understand that it's a learning process and everything is not going to happen the way it did for someone else, that we have our own journey and our own path. So I think that's, exactly. that's very crucial which also comes down to, you know, understanding what are the impacts that we want to make as individuals, not only in our own lives, but in within society, because on your side of it, your impact right now is to work with the, you know, high school students, getting them into these trial situations and understanding not only, not only the legal system, but also building their confidence and also, and, and starting from an early age to decide what path they want to go on. And I think that's really important. Right. So for my question to you, because I, that's, that's Mm -hmm. what I talk about a lot is two things. It's about action and impact. Like what are the action steps that we want to take and what impact do we want to make in our own lives and and those that are around us? So what are some like projecting, looking at yourself two or three years from now, what impact are you looking to make um, amongst I mean, it could be amongst the youths or uh, in a case where, you know, we're talking about women as well, just really being able to elevate each other. What impact are you looking to make in in your personal and professional life? That's, and you hit the nail on the head. I really want to focus on bringing youth up to where they should be and, and exposing them to opportunities and things that they wouldn't necessarily have ever thought of because I had that opportunity and I want to make sure that others do. And I'm not just talking about females, but males is most definitely. They have to be able to know that there's more to life than what's outside their doors. And a lot of us don't get that opportunity to find out until it's too late, until our lives take a totally different path and we're not able to, to, to experience new things. So I really like the idea of working with high school students because I, I like to get to them while they're still young, before they start making any decisions that could take them down a totally different path Absolutely. and really ex, uh, expose them to these opportunities and these things that they may not necessarily have ever even thought that they possibly could even experience at, in their lives. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's. I really believe that's that's my path right now. And that's what I'd like to be doing for the next five, 10 years or so. Oh, that's that's really good. I mean, I think it's it's definitely um, a, a purpose that really is required now for our use. It's, it's mm-hmm. just making sure that we put them on a path that's different from what they're accustomed to and, the con- yes. and to change the conversations that's happening in their homes as well, right? Because we know some of the conversation, especially in the black and, black and brown community, the conversations mm-hmm. that are happening in those households are different from our other counterparts. So it's being able to, yes, position, they are. you know, yeah, position our, you know, our, our kids that, you know, the, the ones that next generation to know that there's a lot more to, as you said, to the world than what you see outside um, your, your front door or what's happening in your home, right? Regardless of your mm-hmm. situation or your circumstances, there are a lot more things that you can do. It's just believing in yourself and really having that confidence to go one step further, regardless right. of what um, right. you know, anyone else may think or opinions that they may have so you know that's Mm -hmm. that's amazing I do appreciate you joining me this conversation was really 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 great I think it's um definitely one of those it's been different because we did work on most of my conversations been focused on women but I Mm -hmm. think this was an important one just to remind uh, the younger generation that we are here for them and we're you know here is a support system and and we're doing things to advance them so thank you very much for having Well, thank you for having me. (laughs) It was so much fun. Thank you.